Welcome to the Graybert Next event. I am Wilfred Graybert, CEO and founder of Graybert. Today, you will hear about the latest CAT technologies developed by Graybert. Graybert is a developer of the Aris CAT software. Graybert has the second largest installed base in the world of DWG software after AutoCAD. Millions of professionals use our 2D, 3D DWG CAT software, either under the Aris brand or another CAT software using our technology as a platform. Unlike most of our competitors, we are not a publicly listed company. We are different and we are successful because of it. We have been family owned and independent for more than 40 years. Graybert is committed to developing long-term collaborations with its customers, employees, and partners. Because we don't answer to the stock exchange, we can build long-term strategies and reinvest our profits in innovation for the common good of our Aris community. Graybird enables Aris users and developers to safeguard their investments in the DWG format. Our mission is to deliver modern DWG experiences. In a world increasingly dominated by 3D models and globalization, we enable DWG CAT users to manage their digital transformation. Our mobile and cloud technologies will improve collaboration and create smarter DWG drawings that work in good synergy with BIM and 3D models. Graybert has a head start in cloud and mobile technologies for DWG CAT. Graybert also develops innovations for smarter BIM and mechanical drawings. I trust that these innovations will enable Graybird and its partners to build the next generation of CAT software and lead the DWG market into the future. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you will enjoy this event. And now I will hand over to Cedric, who will introduce our agenda. Thank you, Wilfried, and a warm welcome to all of you watching us today. Over the last 12 months, we've been busy to add many new features. New features to help you innovate, design, and simply get your projects out faster. None of these innovations could have happened without the tremendous feedback we are receiving from our users. So if you have any questions or remarks, I warmly invite you to send an email to next at Tell us, for example, what you found most exciting in the new features we are showing today. But most importantly, these new features are ready for you. So I invite you to visit our website, graber.com, and try them by yourself. Now, here is our agenda. We will start with the top five new CAD features, followed by the new Beam features. Next, we will talk about CloudCAD and MobileCAD with our Trinity features. And finally, the new mechanical features in ARES Mechanical. If you like to dive deeper into some of these topics, you may also join our technical keynotes right after this session. With no further ado, I will now hand over to Andre, who will introduce the top five new CAD features. Thanks. When professionals use a CAD software like Ares Commander, the very first thing they expect is productivity. This includes, first of all, stability and performance. It is not something we can show in a demo, but I want you to know that we make continuous efforts in this direction. Today, I have also selected five new cut features that I would like to highlight for you. For practical reasons, we will show them on Windows, but they are the same on Mac and Linux. I take the opportunity to mention that we are supporting Windows 11, macOS 12 Monterey, and recent Linux distributions. There is, however, one feature that is specific to Windows, and this is the contextual ribbons. 
contextual ribbons bring important usability benefits by displaying specific tools when you are working with hedges, dimensions, images, or underlays. Let's watch the demo. To work more efficiently on your drawings, you need easier access to your tools. Under this premise, Ares Commander seeks a constant evolution that allows you to make your workflow more and more efficient. From being able to add an angle to modifying a distance while drawing, even simply changing the color of the model space background. Which color do you identify with the most? Maybe gray? Or do you prefer white? Sometimes there are small functions of very specific actions, but these refinements help the user to work more comfortably. The Ares Commander user interface is now enhanced with contextual ribbons that allow you to view and modify entities. For example, the dimensions, or maybe being able to edit a hatch easily. It also appears when you run some commands like hatch to create new entities, replacing the old dialogues with functions built into the ribbon. Contextual tabs provide important usability benefits, making it easy to access editing tools grouped according to the type of object selected. These changes are applied in real time, while no amodal box blocks the graphics area. For example, when selecting an external reference, we can see the corresponding contextual palette that allows us to open the external reference, among other options, or simply open the Reference Manager. We can also edit images. When we select one, we can see the specific functions for this type of entity. Let's change the brightness, for example. The contextual palette also appears when we select a table cell, showing several options to work with it. It also appears when we select an inserted file with a DGN extension, or even a PDF. For example, we can learn which layers are contained in this embedded PDF. Among the annotation objects, in addition to the dimensions that we saw a moment ago, we will also see contextual palettes when selecting leaders, multi-leaders, and tolerance symbols. Another time-saving improvement is a new cycling selection. Cycling selection will become your best friend when multiple entities are overlapping and you want to select only one. In this video, we will see the new Cycling Selection option. Before we dive deeper into this feature, let me remind you about some other selection methods which were introduced previously. First of all, entities can be selected simply by clicking on them. Secondly, you can make selections with windows. If you drag your mouse from left to right, the resulting window will be blue and only the entities fully inside it will be selected. If you move from right to left instead, you will create what is called a capture window. This type of window is green, and entities crossing its border will also be captured, hence the name. After selecting entities, you can also remove items from the current selection. To do this, you must hold Shift while you click on the entities you want to remove. You can remove them one by one, or make a window or capture type selection. Recently, we also introduced the Lasso Selection option. To use it, simply click and hold down the left mouse button while dragging. It is helpful when making a form selection. But sometimes, these simple methods fall a bit short. And this is particularly true when many entities are overlapping, like the hatch and other entities in this example. It can become very frustrating. In the Properties palette, you could already find the Smart Select option, which enables you to filter out entities according to various criteria. It is powerful, but it can take time. We could even use this drop-down that appears in the Properties palette. It allows us some quick access thanks to the Filter by Type of Entities option, but it does not allow individual selection only by type. The new Cycling Selection option solves our problem in a much more intuitive way. 
Whenever you hover the cursor on overlapping entities, you will see this icon. This helps you to display a list of the entities and select only the one you want. Cycling selection can be deactivated from the status bar. You can easily turn this feature on and off. It can also be turned on or off using the Control plus W key combination. You can also access the cycling selection settings from the status bar by right-clicking. If we position the mouse pointer on top of overlapping entities, the Shift plus Spacebar combination allows us to jump between the different elements. It is another way to perform cycling selection without opening the drop-down menu. I hope you will find this new feature very helpful. Finally, if you have multiple entities overlapping each other, it could be that some of these are just duplicates that were previously created by mistake. For example, we find 12 blocks here, but we only see four of them. In that case, let me remind you of the discard duplicates command that can help you to clean up your drawing. Now let's talk about sheet sets. Sheet sets are used in Ares and AutoCAD to organize large projects with multiple drawings. In previous versions, we released the Sheet Set Manager. Now we are adding the Pack and Go feature to make it easier to zip and share all your sheet sets. The Pack and Go function allows you to create a zip file of the main file along with all the references used in that file, linked with relative paths and maintaining the directory structure. When a user shares this packaged project with another, the recipient will be able to open the main file, including all external references, inserted images, etc., without fear of losing any references and maintaining the original folder structure. On the other hand, Pack and Go is also available to use from the Sheet Set palette. Sheet Sets in Ares Commander use the same DST format that AutoCAD uses. When used from here, it will also include all sheet set references in a zip file that is very easy to share with other users. With this, it will generate a file structure that could be more complex depending on the number of sheets configured in the different files that are part of the sheet set. But before exporting the entire project, we are going to make a few simple changes, which will remind us how to add a sheet already configured in a file. In this example, it is a file that only contains one configured sheet. The sheet is added with its original name, but we can place it inside the Sheet Set Manager tree and change its name, and even add a number to this sheet. Also, we can create subcategories. And drag the sheets according to the order that interests us. We can even relocate the different categories or subcategories. We could even determine that some of these sheets cannot be printed. Now, let's use Pack and Go. We save the zip file. Let's unzip it to see the folder structure and references. The Sheet List Table function, located in the context menu of the Sheet Set Manager, provides a way to create a table within the drawing that lists all the sheets or subsets. With this function, the user can avoid filling in this table manually or having to retype the sheet name or other information that has already been provided in the sheet set. If we do it from a subcategory, the resulting table will only obtain the data of the sheets that are included. If it is done from the main header instead, a table is generated with all the sheets included. The table information can be customized to add or remove more parameters.
We can even determine which sheets to include. Also, to improve the way Sheetset Manager can export drawings, support has been introduced for DWF and DWFX files, which are highly compressed formats compared to DWG, and therefore easier to use and transmit over the Internet. Of course, you can also export your Sheetset to PDF format which is easier to share with other users as they don't need to have a DWG editor to view them. It should be noted that the resulting PDF will contain all the sheets of the sheet set if it is published from the main point, or if it is done from a subcategory, publishing only the sheets it contains. Speaking of productivity, spreadsheets are frequently used in parallel of DWG drawings. In Ares Commander, you could already find features such as tables with formulas or data extraction. Now we are adding the possibility to link the content of tables with Excel or similar programs. Let's take a look. Ares Commander allows you to create tables that can even contain formulas, like those you would create in spreadsheet programs. It even allows you to create tables from data extraction. However, Filling in and managing the data is more convenient and flexible using specific programs such as Microsoft Excel, Google Sheets, OpenOffice, or LibreOffice. For instance, we could have a spreadsheet made in Excel that we would need to insert in our drawing. One option would be to copy and paste the content. This is a nice and easy method. But the limit of this approach is that this table could become obsolete because its content is not linked to the original file. Now we can go one step further and use the data link feature to create a bidirectional link between our drawing and the spreadsheet. In our example, we will use Excel, but it works the same way in other programs. When you go to Insert Table, you will now find in the dialog a new option to Insert from Data Link. Notice that there is a drop-down that is empty. This is because we don't have any linked files yet. This icon brings us to the Data Link dialog, where we could create a link. But before doing it this way, let's cancel and see that we can also find this feature from the Insert tab. Now we click on Data Link. Notice that it takes us to the same dialog box that we saw a moment ago. Through this box, we can create one or multiple links with spreadsheets. We first create a name for this link between files. Now we look for the file we want to link. We determine the sheet with which we are going to work. Then we specify whether we want the entire sheet or we are only going to use a specific group of cells. If your table is very big, it could be that you only need a portion of it. In this case, it will be the full sheet. The file is linked. Now we are going to create an Ares Commander table based on this information. To do this, in the Annotate tab, we go back to Insert Table. Now when choosing Insert from a Data Link, we see that our previously loaded option appears. We simply select it, and after pressing OK, we can insert it into the drawing. In short, it is a table entity whose content and format are obtained from a Microsoft Excel file. The table and file are connected in such a way that if the content of the original file changes, it will also be updated in our drawing. But what happens if we make a modification to the table inside our drawing? First, let's add some text in this column. Now we are going to modify some numerical data, for example, this amount. After pressing Enter, we are going to update the Excel file. For that, from the Insert tab, we select the Write Data Link File command. 
With this, we will update the information in the external file. We select the table that we want to update, and after pressing Enter, the operation is carried out. In Excel, we can open the file and see the content recently added from Ares Commander. We could continue from there and make some more changes in Excel before coming back to Ares. Then we just save the changes. Now, after saving the changes in Excel, if you had the drawing open in Ares Commander, a notification will appear informing you that the reference needs to be updated. The truth is that it can also be done manually using the Update Data Link Table command. So after you select the table and press Enter, it will update. This feature to update our table is required to refresh the data if and only if you kept areas open while making modifications in another program. Indeed, each time we open the drawing, Ares Commander will automatically update the table for you. The key value of the data link, therefore, is that you can ensure your table in Ares will always reflect the same content as in your external spreadsheet. Finally, I would like to close the top 5 with a 3D feature. When you work in 3D, you frequently need to change your point of view. The new Wheel Navigator is making it very easy. Let's see it in practice. Ares Commander offers many tools for 3D modeling, which we can easily see if we switch to the 3D workspace. Here we find tools for everything from simple shapes to complex shapes through solids and combining Boolean operations, for example. For this process, it is essential to be able to move freely in the 3D scene, since it is necessary to constantly change the point of view. Ares Commander offers us the View Navigator that allows us to quickly move between views top, bottom, front, right, left, etc. We can even select the isometric views with a single click. This is something that we could do before with this option, but now we can select them directly from the View Navigator. We can activate or deactivate the View Navigator using this option. Although by default it appears in the upper left corner of your drawing area, you can place it in another corner if you like. View Navigator is a very useful feature when working in a 3D environment, as it can easily switch between parallel and perspective views and acts as a 3D orientation indicator letting you know the current direction of the view. We must not forget the shading modes that allow us to visualize the 3D drawing more easily, either by hiding lines or by painting with the colors of the layer or object, as specified in the properties of each entity. We can turn any view into home. First, we must use this option to save the current view. Now, we can go to any other view and then press Home. We could even call the View command and load some of the previously created views into this drawing. It is a perspective view. Let's save it as Home. Now, we go to any view. After pressing Home, we quickly return to the interior view of this store. The Roll view Orbit command allows us to orbit our 3D model. The truth is that by combining the Shift and Pan keys, we can easily orbit. In turn, when executing the Roll View command, we get even more options if we press the right mouse button. Now we're able to block an axis, or get free navigation. We can even set the spin center of our orbit by positioning the pointer where we want the center to be and holding it down as we move the mouse. Although the View Navigator is primarily used for 3D modeling, you can also use it to draw 2D geometry. For example, we can rotate the plane 90 degrees simply by clicking one of these options to one side 
or the other. We can write at any angle. Notice that the CCS rotates at the same time. If we want to work in this view, we may prefer to reposition the CCS so that the x-axis is horizontal on our screen. For that, we execute the CCS command and choose the View option only with the V. This way we could draw, for example, the elevation, taking the plan lines as a reference. To return to the original position, we can use the World option of the CCS command, which will relocate the CCS to its original position. Then we simply execute the Plan View command, pressing Enter twice, so the plane rotates in such a way that the x-axis is positioned horizontally on the screen. Now we could draw in this other sense and go from one view to another very easily. This was my top five for the new cut features, but I am now handing over to Robert, who will introduce more new features related to BIM. Thanks. The BIM features in Iris Commander aim at enabling CAD users to create smarter DWG drawings for BIM projects. Our BIM drawings are smarter because you can refresh the geometry of the DWG drawings when the BIM project is modified. Our BIM drawings are also smarter because we can read the BIM objects to automate many tedious tasks. To create these BIM drawings in DWG format, we can import Revit and IFC files. Today, I'm pleased to announce that we are adding support for the Revit 2022 format. And now, let's take a look at the new features for BIM. To begin with, let's come back to the View Navigator and Pack and Go features, only that we will see them now in the context of our BIM drawings. The new View Navigator is particularly useful for BIM projects. In previous versions of Ares Commander, we introduced the ability to import Revit and IFC files. Now we can easily look at our model from different angles with the View Navigator. And we can take advantage of them to create BIM drawings using the Plan, Section, and Elevation features. Let's create a new floor plan. Using the View Navigator, we could position ourselves in a front view, which helps us to select the clipping points. Now we click on the Level 13 drawing that appeared in the BIM Navigator. And this is the floor plan we created from the BIM model. This drawing retains all the information of the BIM objects. BIM drawings in Ares Commander are also smarter. Their content can be updated if we receive a new version of the BIM model. Documenting a BIM project typically requires multiple drawings and sheets showing different views of your project. In previous versions of Ares Commander, we released the ability to generate BIM drawings. BIM drawings are smarter DWG files whose geometry is extracted and updated from the Revit and IFC files. All the BIM drawings created are automatically organized as sheet sets. Now we added the option to use the Pack and Go feature to export all your BIM drawings into a zip file. To do so, you need to go to the Sheet Set Manager and find the Pack and Go option there. The zip file obtained makes it easy to share your project with other users. Last year, we introduced the BIM Material Mapper. This feature helps you define the style of the BIM objects in 2D drawings created by Iris. A typical example is when with walls. Our material mapper, you can define that all the walls of a certain type will have this specific hatch style. In the version 2023, we're adding support for multi-component walls and the unification of materials when the entities are connected to each other. Let's take a look. A BIM building contains walls, which are, in turn, divided into components. These components determine the material layers that compose the walls. When selecting a wall, we can see in its properties that it is a multi-component wall, and by hovering the cursor over it, we can see the materials it is made of. 
Ares Commander recognizes these components of BIM models, and through our Material Mapper, we can assign different textures to each of them. Now, in the Material Mapper, we can assign the corresponding texture. The changes have been incorporated into the BIM model information. Now, we need to refresh the view so it updates. The changes made in the plan view are also updated in all the sheets where this view has been previously inserted. Even if one of these materials is being used in another wall, it will also contain the associated fill from the material mapper. In this case, we can also see that the union between walls is resolved automatically thanks to the fact that they share the same material. Another way to automate drawings is to read the BIM properties to create smart labels whose content will be updated if the BIM model is modified. Last year, we introduced BIM labels for doors, walls, and windows. Now, we are introducing the support for rooms and spaces. In this demo, we will see how Ares Commander is now able to work with rooms and spaces in imported BIM projects. The rooms in Ares Commander are three-dimensional spaces that we can easily select through the BIM Navigator. To do this, we'll start in the Elements section, where we can search for the room's objects and, one by one, view where they are in the 3D model. But back to our 2D view. We select one of them, and pressing the right button, we will choose Select Matching from the drop-down menu to select the rest of the identical elements in this view. In the Properties palette, we can vary the style with which we want to indicate these elements, choosing a different type of cross, or none at all. We could also select some of them individually and change their color and transparency, to differentiate, for example, the common areas of this building from the private ones, or even indicate the toilet area with another color. When selecting a room, we can learn about its BIM properties from the Properties palette. We can quickly see its perimeter, area, and volume, among others. All this information was added in the BIM model and Ares Commander is able to read it easily. Ares Commander enables us to create automatic labels for these rooms. To do this, we open the Labels Library and choose between the different options available for this type of BIM element. Now we apply our selection to All Rooms. From the BIM tab, we choose Label All Rooms, and they will automatically be located in the center of the rooms, with the information that they have obtained directly from the Room BIM object. In this case, we can change an automatic value, such as the name of the room, to a personalized one, which we can then extract to tables. Labels are annotative objects. In fact, they are annotative blocks, with automatic data that they extract from the BIM object itself. Since they are annotative objects, it is important to verify that we have created them in the desired scale. If not, we must add all the necessary scales to them, so that later they can be seen correctly when we configure the views in the sheets. Note that in this example, we only have one selected label. If we want all the labels to be visible at different scales, we must be careful to select all of them in order to assign them the same configuration at the same time. To do this, once the labels are selected, we can press the right button and choose the Select Matching option. Now, with all the room labels of this drawing selected, we can add or remove annotative scales from here in the Properties palette. Adding more scales is something we can do later, as needed. Now, we go to the main drawing. Here, we choose a sheet of paper space. Now, we are going to add one of the views. We can do it from the Sheet Set Manager by right-clicking on a view, or directly from the view in the BIM Navigator. Right-click on the view and choose Place on Sheet. We can press the right button to change the scale, or choose the one we have defined, if it is correct. 
we click to insert the view. Now we insert the plan view that we had configured before, where we can see that the room labels are displayed. Room tags can also be added in a section view. For that, we are going to open one of these views with a double click. Now we must choose the label that we want to use. Each view is independent. We choose Set as Default for Rooms. We apply it to all the rooms with the Label All Rooms command. It's just that easy. We save the changes and return to the main drawing. We must reload the view so that it is updated and shows the labels. Notice that in this case, a pop-up balloon alerts us to the need to reload the reference. Here, we can see the updated view. In any case, if we want to update a view, we just have to select it and press the right button to choose the Refresh option. The icons that appear above allow you to do the same. This icon allows you to update all views at once, while this one here is used to update the selected view. That's it for DWG for BIM features. To dive deeper into this topic, I invite you to join our technical keynote later today. Now, Cedric will talk to you about the new Trinity features. Thanks. Now, let's talk about Trinity. The ARES Trinity is Gruber's unique concept combining CAD on desktop, mobile, and cloud. ARES Commander for Windows, Mac, and Linux, ARES Touch for Android and iOS mobile devices, and ARES Kudo, our online solution. More than three products, it sees an ecosystem aiming at improving collaboration and deliver projects faster. Depending on the needs of each user, these three products can be purchased all together with a Trinity license or individually. Today, I am happy to announce two new licensing options. First of all, the Mobility Pack is a license combining ARES Kudo and ARES Touch for a same user. It is a perfect mix for collaborators, experts, and managers that are not heavily producing drawings, but mostly using and collaborating on them. For example, a technician that is using drawings to perform maintenance activities, or team leaders on a construction site. With the mobility pack, they can not only read the drawings, but also make modifications and use the collaboration features, such as inserting a voice comment for the design team, or a photo taken from their mobile phone. The second new license type is the Flex Cloud License that will be released before summer. We already have the Flex Network License that is offered as perpetual or annual. We will keep offering these licenses, but we are adding the Flex Cloud License. The new Flex Cloud License enables customers to share not only RS Commander, but the Trinity License, which includes Commander, Touch, and Kudo. With Traditional network licenses, the license server is on the local network, which implies that all the users need to be in the same building. But with the new Flex Cloud license, the pool of licenses is in the cloud. It no longer matters if users are at the office, in home office, or even in a different country. Each user starting with any of the three products takes a Trinity license from the pool. Then when the user stays inactive for more than 60 minutes, the license will be returned, making it available for another user. In other words, the Flex Cloud license is the modern evolution of the network license, but we will keep offering both. Why? Because it's a key competitive advantage of ARES to keep offering choice with perpetual, annual, and network licenses. A second topic also related to licensing is the new social login. When you activate a Gruber license, you will be invited to create a login and password. These credentials enable you to use your license on different devices. Now, you can also see these two buttons to use instead your Google or Apple accounts to authenticate yourself. The social login is available for all ARES users. Other single sign-on options, such as Microsoft login, are available for enterprise customers. And now, some features we would like to highlight. To begin with, some usability improvements. The dialogues to open, save, and share files in the cloud have been improved to offer a better workflow with files in the cloud. Let's take a look. 
Ares Commander presents changes in the Open and Save As boxes, allowing you to open and save files that are hosted in the cloud directly, just as if they were on a hard drive. This box allows us to search among the different cloud storage options that we have configured in our account. We can add more through this icon. At the same time, it allows us to access local files or use the traditional Windows search engine. We can also select the recent files, and even those that were open from the cloud will appear in this list, which indicates their location with an icon. Alternatively, you can also use the Ares Kudo drive. If we leave the mouse pointer over a file, we can see a preview of the drawing. With a right click, we can also access older versions of the files, if they exist. Now we open it. If we go to Save As, we can quickly see that this is the same type of dialog. To share our drawing with other users, we can invite people and manage permissions from this dialog. Note that this dialog is the same in Commander, Kudo, and Touch. Once we have granted editor rights to this user, he will be able to modify our drawing. I can also share my drawing as a link. Using this link, the second user will open the drawing. In this case, the second user is working in Ares Kudo, but it could also be Ares Commander or Ares Touch. Of course, the second user needs an Ares license. Users that lack one will be offered free viewing. If both users have the same file open simultaneously, only one of them will be able to edit it, while the other will see it as read-only. It is also very important to note that the file owner can revoke access. If you like, you can grant someone viewing or editing access just for a limited time. PDF import is a popular feature in Ares Commander to convert PDF to DWG. Now, you can also do it online with Ares Kudo. When a drawing was printed to PDF and you don't have the source file, you can convert it back to DWG with Ares Kudo. First, you will upload the PDF or use one that is already in one of your cloud storage accounts. If you don't have any, you can simply upload to the Ares Kudo drive. Secondly, you can use an existing drawing or create a new one. Next, you will find the option to import PDF here, where we see that we can also import and convert DGN files from MicroStation. Now, from the palette, we look for our PDF file. If the PDF contains multiple sheets, we can select which ones to import. In the palette, we find more options to define the scale and insertion coordinates. See also this option to rebuild the layer structure. Next, we will insert the PDF. At first, it is a block, which makes it easy to move, or scale if necessary. Finally, to modify the content, we will explode the block. Note that all the layers have been recreated from the information available in the PDF. Now, we can make any modification we like. For example, we can delete this part and draw a modification. Finally, if I had to stress out only one new feature in RS Touch, I would like to highlight the new printing experience. First, the PDF export has been improved. A new palette is offered with all the printing options to select paper size, sheets, and more. And secondly, we added Print to Cloud. As you can see, the options are the same as in the new PDF feature, only that in that case, we would print on paper. Print to Cloud works with modern printers that are compatible with Apple AirPrint or equivalent services to print from Android. That's all for the top new 20 features, but there is a lot more. Right after this general session, you can join us for a technical keynote to dive deeper into this topic and learn about seven features that are real game changers. That said, Robert will now speak about our new mechanical features. Now we will talk about Ares Mechanical. 
Iris Mechanical includes all the CAD features of Iris Commander and adds specific features for 2D mechanical design. This includes support for mechanical standards such as ISO, ANSI, DIN, GIS, and BSI. And part libraries to insert screws, bolts, nuts, washers, and holes. But over the last 12 months, we've been working on a new generation of this product to offer compatibility with legacy AutoCAD mechanical objects. It's a major improvement because it means that you can now read and modify part references, part lists, and ultimately update bill of materials in drawings previously created with AutoCAD mechanical objects. The advantage of Iris Mechanical over AutoCAD are a price that is significantly lower and the availability of perpetual and network licenses. To begin with, let's take a look at part references. Nowadays, new product design is most frequently done with 3D CAD solutions. But in parallel, billions of older 2D mechanical drawings need to be maintained. In this demo, we will see how you can use Ares Mechanical to update and modify 2D drawings that were created with AutoCAD Mechanical. Let's start with part references, which are represented here with blue points. With a double click, I can edit the part ref information. In this dialog, I can, for example, click on Customize to add another field for the vendor. and slightly modify the description. We see here a quantity of one. If the same part is inserted multiple times, we can change the quantity here. Alternatively, we can copy a part ref several times in a quantity of one, like this. We copy from center to center. Now we see the quantity of 4 in the parts list and the description we modified. When I select the part ref again, I see that the data can also be read and edited from there. Let me show you that we can also make a part ref from any entity. Let's say I need to add some silicone to protect the head of this screw from water. Here, I am designing a polyline that I will turn into a spline. Next, I select to create a part reference. Note that I could also create one from a block. We insert the part ref and add a name and description. After being able to create and modify part references, we will now see how we can complete our workflow with part lists and bill of materials. Now, let's take a look at the BOM feature. I validate by pressing Enter to select the main one. To begin with, I see some elements in blue. If I fly over with the cursor, you will see that it is highlighting data that is overridden. In some cases, there is a good reason. For instance, our drawing follows the DIN standard, and this part was shown with ISO reference, so we entered the DIN equivalent. Similarly, we want to keep these names as overrides, because originally it was empty. Now, pay attention to this quantity of 2 for our screw. If I press this button, I can remove the override, and it shows now as 1. I apply the change for now, but in our drawing we do have two screws. Yet, only one part reference is inserted. To fix the quantity, I open the part ref and increase to 2. Now, our bomb is showing the right value. To continue, I can also insert an item directly inside the bomb. For example, I am adding the painting that I will need. Inserting items like this is typically useful when no part ref can be linked. Finally, we have the option to remove items from the parts list, such as the silicone. Now that our bomb is well configured, let's take a deeper look at the parts list. 
You can insert the parts list using this feature in the ribbon. But in this drawing, the parts list is already inserted, so I simply double click on it. To begin with, I will insert the name and vendor columns that I see are missing. Note that I can only insert columns for fields enabled in the Part Reference dialog. I can always update the information from here, but the modification will then be highlighted in blue. When this list becomes very long, it is sometimes difficult to identify each part. Therefore, the Zoom To and Highlight buttons are here to help you find the corresponding items in the drawing. Note that we see here this screw highlighted in blue because it is the one that has a part reference. Finally, the item column shows the balloon number. Let's try changing this value. When we do so, we can see the number in the corresponding balloon changes as well. The third feature I would like to highlight is the step and I just import and export. These are popular formats for the 3D product design and are a great addition to Ares Mechanical. In Ares Mechanical, you can also import STEP or IGES files. These are two very popular exchange formats for 3D product design. For instance, our engineering department has been working on a modification, and they want me to update the DWG drawings. This is the STEP file we have imported. I created three floating viewports to see it from different angles. While only geometry was imported, it is nice to visualize the object inside Aries Mechanical. Note also that the 3D geometry we obtained is made of 3D solids, so we can further use the 3D features that you can find in the 3D modeling workspace. For instance, a section like this could be used as a basis to make a 2D mechanical drawing. Note that it also works the other way around. You can also export a DWG drawing to IGES or STEP. To summarize, Ares Mechanical is a software that focuses on maintaining 2D mechanical drawings in DWG format, but the support for IGES and STEP enables some collaboration with 3D product design solutions. This session is now getting to an end. We try to summarize the new feature highlights, but we invite you to discover all the new features on Graybird.com. Don't miss our technical keynotes. You can find them on the event page next.grayboard.com. This event page is also where all the replays will be published, so you can watch them again. Feel free to share if you think other people would be interested. If you have any question, you can also send an email to next.grayboard.com and we will get back to you promptly.